though, as of One Piece chapter 828, everything we know about Sanji has been confirmed to be a lie because he just rejected a very beautiful girl. If I had known this chapter was going to be so good, I 100% would have done a live reaction. But yeah, One Piece chapter 828 review. So, we get to see Sanji's brothers in this chapter, whose names I believe would be Ichiji and Niji, because the title of the chapter is 1 and 2, and San is 3 in Japanese. Sanji the third son, so I, I'm assuming his two brothers would be called Ichiji for the first son, and Niji for the second son in case you were unaware of why people were calling them by those names. But, this is where things get really interesting, because we learned something about Big Mom in this chapter. Something interesting that I really want to talk about. Big Mom has 85 children. Let that sink in for a minute, guys. Big Mom has 89 children. Now, we were all kind of joking about it, but... And we were also all kind of serious at the same time. There is no way Big Mom had 43 husbands. There is no way 43 men had sex with Big Mom. I'm sorry. Well, at least of their own free will. Just quickly talking about this, I feel the most likely scenario would probably that she wanted children so she could strengthen her pirate crew through marriage as she talked to, as Pudding talked about in the chapter. So, what she probably did was she probably found men and was just like, listen, either you do what I say and help me get pregnant with these kids, help me have these kids, or I can destroy your hometown, I can kill your entire family. Like, I'm one of the Yoko, you have to obey me. So, yeah, she probably forced the men to do it. That, or the men are just even uglier and more disgusting than Big Mom. But this is Big Mom. I don't know if you can get more disgusting than Big Mom. So, we get to see a lot more of Pudding in this chapter. Now, she talks about Sanji in this chapter, and she seems to really talk at, about Sanji that she loves him. Or at least really genuinely likes him. However, she also seems to be describing his bounty poster, not Sanji. I mean, yes, or it seems that he's heard about him. Like, he's a good cook. Like, he, he taught me a couple of things. His, he, his eyeballs will turn into hearts. I mean, you know, he has a swirly eyebrow. He's like a flirt. Like, the way they describe Sanji being like a gentleman and how he had black legs. Like, she thought his legs were literally black. And it was either Chopper or Nami who pointed out, no, Sanji's legs aren't really black. That's just the name given to him by the Navy. So, yeah, and yeah, I mean, that kind of implied maybe she hadn't met him. She, she said she had met Sanji before. I don't think she had, but who knows? Who am I to judge? Uh, another reason I don't think she met Sanji before, because Sanji is just a silhouette when he's turning her down. Yeah, so I should probably talk about that. Sanji does reject her, and he tells her, and I quote, I really want to marry you, but I can't. I got to return to my friend. Now, there is a one reason why I really like this line, and that is because for a long time, especially based off of some of the events of the Dreck Rosa arc with Violet, I, somewhere inside of me, I had this little feeling. I was like, would Sanji go against his morals of uh, hitting a woman. Would Sanji hit a woman, or and would he reject a woman for Luffy? Like, who does, where does his loyalty really lie? Does it lie with the women of the world, or does it lie with Luffy? And I feel like this arc is doing a great job at cementing that, because he just rejected Pudding, who is pretty good, pretty attractive. I mean, for a manga character. But yeah, he just rejected her, and he also to rejected the wedding instantly, when, although when he, when he told Capone that Luffy would be the Pirate King. So he had definitely demonstrated more loyalty lately. More loyalty to Luffy specifically. Which is really, really nice. I like that. It kind of reminds us that Sanji is there for more than just Nami and Robin boob. Pudding mentioned something in this chapter though, that I'm just gonna bring it up. I'm not sure where I stand on the idea, but she mentioned that one of her sisters 
previously lust, lust and ran away in search of love. Now, it, it, we then transition straight to Nami. Now, who does Nami know that she had met during the series who were constantly talking about getting married and finding true love? That's right, Lola. So, yeah, Lola being one of the daughters of Big Mom is still very possible. Do I think it, that's the case? Maybe. Maybe. I'm not really sure. I mean, there's not enough evidence for me to go off of. Because I don't believe in going off of the type of lip, lipstick the characters wear to decide whether or not they're related by blood. I, I don't think that makes any sense to do that. But, I digress. Let's move on to another topic of the chapter. The Straw Hats have, as of the moment, gained another ally in putting what Pudding pretty much said in the chapter was she realizes how much the Straw Hats all care about Sanji and how much he cares about them and she doesn't and she wouldn't want to marry him and if that meant he would have to leave the friend. So she would do everything in her power to help them reunite with Sanji. Now, so she going off to go to the wedding, I believe, and but then the Straw Hats go back to the study and they find Peckham's is missing. Brooke comments that he's probably just taking a dump. So after looking around for a little bit, they go to the bathroom and they find he left a note. It's a, there's a note in the bathroom saying, turn back. And now, so the Straw Hats are all kind of concerned. They don't really know who did it. Now, we don't know who did it either, but it could have been the Vine Smoke family or the Vin Smoke, however you want to pronounce it. It could have been Peckham's himself. Some people are saying maybe Jinbei left the note there. I don't think it was Jinbei, just because Jinbei's not an idiot. He knows leaving a note that said turn back is going to make Luffy decide to go and do the exact opposite of that and actually go further on ahead. But yeah, so that is what Luffy does. He looks at the note and he announces that this is getting interesting. Now, I do want to offhandedly mention that Pedro has been very violent in this chapter. In fact, Pedro was actually threatening to kill Pudding before Nami stopped him. But well, his reasoning made sense. His reasoning was this woman is the daughter of Big Mom. Big Mom is the enemy. She could go and stab us in the back. Now, the Straw Hats are obviously way too trusting and are not going to trust Pudding because they are now friends as far as they're probably concerned at this point. But the point, though, is that Pedro will gripe. Now, some people seem to think Pedro was acting in a way that makes him a little suspicious, especially considering he was supposed to keep an eye on Peckham. That is not how I see it. I am looking at it like this. Zoro isn't there to be the realistic guy right now. So, Pedro is going to do that. Pedro is going to be the guy that will say things like, Luffy, you're taking on too many strong opponents. Stop it. Pedro is going to give the Zoro badass, like, you know, realistic first mate speeches while Zoro's away. That's what Pedro is going to do, most likely. And yeah, I mean, this chapter was really good. I felt like it progressed the story. I felt like it was really funny. It was very funny, actually. And it got me really hyped for this arc. Not that I wasn't already hyped. It got me even more hyped for the arc. And it's it was, it was with my first chapter in a while that I can say I legitimately just loved reading. And it's a really, really been a great experience because the past couple chapters have been pretty good, but I haven't had this feeling in a while. So I'm very happy to have recaptured that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review. If I had to rate the chapter, I would give it, you know what? I'll give it a 10 out of 10. I cannot name anything in the chapter that I didn't like. So yeah, 10 out of 10. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Tell me your thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below. I love talking at One Piece with you guys. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out.